Hi folks, they say some of your best uh, lessons that you learn come through mistakes. And I made a mistake. I'm making, this is part of a, a bullet mold. And uh, you can see it's, it's a half of a bullet mold for a 22 long rifle. And um, it's got a pin through a slot. That pin would go through that slot. And uh, it's a blind hole. And I put the handles on. That they they are held on by that pin. I put the handles on, and then I realized I was just testing, and I needed to take them back off. And here I drove this thing into a blind hole. Um, there are two of them. One of them came out. I heated up the the block of aluminum, and I was able to pull it out with vice grips. This guy here did not. I tried many many times, probably an hour. I snapped the pin off. And I thought, oh boy, what am I going to do? So I have these little um, diamond hole saws. Um, and that's one right there. I wish I could get it closer. Let's see if I can go down a little bit. Get better light on it. That's the end of my drill press. Okay. That's a four millimeter diamond hole saw. See if I can get closer. Yeah, that's where it would be in focus. I gotta move this thing so it's focused better. There. Now, they say when you buy these things, you should use water as a lubricant. And it's really hard to do a spray. So I thought, well, I'm going to experiment with actually trying to cut that hole underwater. Now, this was working well enough. I didn't have to clamp it or anything. I see we get the light better over here. Boy. All right. Let's see what I can do here. I'm going to turn it on just like it is. All right. Now, you see we're cutting. I've got pressure. I'm going to reach around all this junk here. I can lift it up. Okay. And right now I'm putting, well, I don't know how much pressure. About as much pressure as you would to drill something fairly delicate. And I don't know how well you can see, but there is a powder coming up from that. Here we go again. Another horrible, horrible video. But anyway, I wanted to show doing this. Because it's such a it's an easy thing to do. I'm actually making pretty good progress. Even while you've been watching, I've cut that probably over an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch. And I'm drilling out a, a um, hard, high-speed steel pin out of aluminum. And I'm using the, the, the core of the thing as a guide so this goes steady. So I'm going to end up with a hole a little bigger than the original hole, but that's okay. I'm going to drill it out and, and, and tap it and make a, a pin with a with screws in so I can remove it. But you can see how much of that uh, of the filings that are coming out of there. And this is a very cheap dr uh, drill. These things, I don't know, it's probably a dollar or two from China. You buy a bunch of them. They sell them in packs or individual. Uh, I've got 
probably, I think I bought five of the four millimeters. I got all different sizes. And the ones up to four millimeters, including four millimeters, will fit in a Dremel. But um, this diamond, these diamond uh, tools like to be run at a slower speed. You can tell this thing is running at uh, 275 RPM right now. So, um, that's a pretty good speed for this uh, diamond hole saw. I wish that wasn't, that water wasn't wiggling like that. I don't know how well this is going to turn out, but I just wanted to show that. And when I get down almost to the tip of the jaws there, I will have that thing totally drilled out. Now, one of the reasons they say to use water as a lubrication, because diamond doesn't last long if you don't lubricate it and cool it. And for some reason, water works better than oil, unless you get a real thin oil. WD-40 maybe. But um, I just wanted to show you how well these things work if you if you submerse it in water. They're, they're well worth, I mean, for the for the kind of applications you might run into. And anytime you're drilling high-speed steel, if you have to drill into high-speed steel or even tungsten carbide, these will cut into tungsten carbide. So there you have it. Drilling that out. I'm going to leave it, let it run for a while. So far this is seven minutes. Oops. I can, uh, try to get a better, better light on this. But, uh, yeah, that was a big mistake, breaking that pin off. And then, you know, I, I probably have 30 hours into trying to build this mold with a drill press and a mini lathe. Whoops, I converted my mini lathe to do some milling so I could mill the faces. And I might have to run it in a four-jaw chuck to bore out the holes because the holes are, are uh, bigger on the bottom than they are on the top. So you have to either use a boring bar of some tiny little boring bar or uh, grind what they call a cherry and then close the close the uh, two halves of the mold onto the cherry while it's spinning in a controlled fashion, both at the same time, like you would be able to with a self-centering vise. And I'm on the process of trying to make a. Uh, self-centering fixture that will uh, mount to the uh, cross slide of the lathe so I can mount the cherry in the lathe chuck and then uh, dial in the I'm letting that up and down to, to get water in there. I don't know for sure if water is getting in there or not. But uh, there's quite a bit of, I don't know if you can see it, but there's quite a bit of filing swirling around. Now it's not cutting as fast as it was. I don't know why, but it's still cutting.
putting a little more pressure on it. Now I can feel something move. I don't know if it's the bit slipping in the jaws or if it's actually cutting in there faster now. I'm going to lift it up and see how far we got here. Oh yeah, we're almost there. show what that looks like again. Okay, I'm going to show what my piece looks like again here. i got to back up a little bit. You see that? That pin in the middle is, is just a little bit narrower than the diameter of the hole saw. So I'm cutting just a little bit of aluminum. But uh, it's going in there. Let's see how much stuff is in that water there. That's a pretty good view, I think. Yeah, these diamond hole saws look pretty good once you get the hang of it. Um, contrary to what you might think, you want to use them at slow speeds. Diamond is cuts well at slow speed. And these are cheap, I'm telling you. They're, they're probably the cheapest ones on the market, and the diamonds are all different sized, and, but they still work. I have them down, I think, to two millimeter. There's barely a hole through the two millimeter one. Maybe three. I, I can't, I'm not sure if they're two or three millimeter. But then they, you know, they go by one millimeter increments, even half a millimeter, I think. But I've got five, six, seven, eight up to, they go way up. I think I have some 40, 40 some millimeter ones. I just buy the ones that I need, the size that I need. And they work well for cutting through like cast iron or anything really. You cut through porcelain, even glass. I don't know if I try to cut a hole, a 42 millimeter hole in glass with one. I guess if I had to, I would have to be very careful. I would imagine you'd spin faster in glass and very, very light feed rate. Yeah, this thing might be getting worn out already. I don't know. I have several other ones that I use for basically just for grinding and they're wore out. Of course, I've used them with a Dremel, which is, again, the slowest speed on the Dremel is like 800 RPM.
all the stuff floating in the water is from the cut. That was a clean little cup thing and clean water when I started. I don't know if that little black blob is floating around in there. Maybe it was inside the, the drill. Maybe that's a COVID amoeba. Yeah, that's what it is. COVID amoeba. Single solitary COVID cell floating around. Oh, they get hate now for saying that. Yeah, we should be just about through. I wonder if I'll feel it when I get through. It'll probably clang and bang and I'll break the break the bit and I should be holding that down or something, but I'm lazy. Yeah, if that goes through and gets stuck, I'm gonna have to get ready to hit flip the switch on this thing. Otherwise I'll break that blade that bit. Mar up my tool, spray water all over the place. Generally ugly situation. But we're almost there. I'm going to try stopping and starting a couple times here. I've got a, a magnifier on the camera, so the camera's only about two inches away right now, three, maybe four. Actually, yeah, it's about four inches. I was going to say four inches is it? about the focal length of this thing. through its liable to cause problems. Just about got it. I think, unless that bit slips in the jaws. Went straight. I'm gonna have to rechuck that thing a little deeper. And try to do it on camera here. Oops. 
see. Nah. Nah. Let's see what we can do here. Wonder if I made a hole in this yet. Nope. I'll show you what I got here. I'm gonna back up just a little bit. There. I didn't expect this to take this long. Yeah, we're going in. You can tell by the little hole in that. The little hole in that thing. I should put a little more water in there. Put it in the hole. Uh, on camera, I would do that. But I'm on camera. I'm not going to waste any more time. I've got 22 minutes here. Now you can tell she's cutting. See all the brown stuff coming out? Gray stuff coming out? That's... Uh, filings from both aluminum and steel. They may be more aluminum now if I've gone through the steel already. Of course, you think I could feel when it gets through the steel. Come on now. Go through that. Well, you see anyway, you do see the process. It's not a quick process, but I don't know of any other way I could have drilled that out. Maybe with a tungsten, a small tungsten carbide drill bit, but if you're going to be drilling a, a three and a half millimeter pin, three sixteenths inch pin, high speed steel pin with a tungsten carbide bit, you got a good chance of breaking the bit or having other problems. I might be through that guy. Well, I'm going to cut it off here, folks. That's it. Thanks for watching.